for starters, I'd like to just talk a little bit about myself and uh, my background. So I, I'm a practicing cardiologist in Arlington, Virginia, just outside of DC. And uh, I've been using ketogenic diets in my practice since 2011. So it's been about eight years now. Um, for the most of that time, uh, we have had a uh, program that uh, is, has been uh, focused uh, specifically on implementing ketogenic diets with real food following uh, in Dr. Westman's footsteps uh, using a similar very basic approach that works extremely well. Um, my uh, nurse who I've been working with since 2012 is here in the back. She could, if she could stand up, I need to thank her as well because I wouldn't be able to do this without uh, Mary Lou's support. So, uh, so I, I, I'll ask in advance for a little bit of forgiveness because I'm stepping a little bit outside my wheelhouse here um, in talking about uh, uh, the topic of inflammation. How many of you have heard of inflammation or the term inflammation? How many of you feel like you have a good understanding of exactly what that is? <laughs> That's very impressive because I'm not sure that I, that I completely do. This is an extremely complicated topic um, and the more time passes and the more research is done and it seems like pretty much every field of medicine, it uh, seems that uh, this process of inflammation seems to underlie just about everything that uh, affects human health. So uh, what I'm going to talk about today is what is inflammation and why does it matter for those of us who are interested in reversing chronic diseases and have interest in cardiovascular disease and uh, metabolic health issues and, and that really ought to be just about everybody. So I don't have any disclosures uh, um, other than the fact that I'm biased through experience uh, in favor of low carb and ketogenic lifestyles. So. At its most basic level, inflammation is activation of the immune system. And uh, what happens is there's some sort of insult uh, that uh, has potential for negative effects on our health and our immune system is mobilized to uh, try to reverse whatever that insult is. And uh, there's a wide range of different triggers. Uh, it could be infections, very commonly. Uh, it could be some sort of traumatic event. Uh, it could be some sort of physical or chemical agent, um, such as radiation or heat injury. Uh, even the death of tissue itself can then be a trigger for further activation of the immune system. Uh, foreign bodies like the splinter in the last uh, picture, but any, any foreign body, uh, the, uh, our bodies want to get rid of it and it's the immune system that's uh, important for uh, taking care of that. And then allergic reactions, of course, um, sorry Jackie. Um, so uh, what happens is uh, these triggers set off a reaction in the immune system and then there's a very tightly regulated and balanced process by which uh, the immune system uh, reacts. And so uh, the, um, the uh, trigger will mobilize through chemical mediators the recruitment of white blood cells. And there's a wide variety of different white cells uh, that will then go to the site of the, uh, of the insult and they release a number of chemicals or um, uh, different so-called mediators uh, which are then uh, active locally or in the bloodstream and it becomes an amplified process while, where th th these chemical mediators will then recruit more white blood cells which then lead to more uh, chemical mediators and more white blood cells and then some of those uh, the active actions of the white blood cells themselves will act against the invader, so uh, cells in particular ones called macrophages will actively engulf uh, the uh, potential infection or dead tissue and uh, try to remove it by essentially taking it up into itself. Uh, many of the, uh, the chemicals released, so I, uh, the term that's used are, is cytokines, 
uh, these uh, chemicals will actually act to um, to actually damage uh, any invading substances or uh, infections. Um, there is something that takes place called oxidation. So you all probably heard the term ox antioxidant. And so uh, there are, are enzymes that can then use, essentially utilize oxygen to change the uh, chemical makeup uh, of, um, of other of tissue or cells. Uh, fr from um, infections or injury in order to actually uh, uh, damage or attack the invader. And this is an example of some of the different cells involved and broadly speaking the immune system can be divided into two branches so there's innate immunity and then adaptive. Initial responses are primarily involve the innate immune system and uh, it, these, this initial response kind of uh, is not very particularly specific. So basically anything that your body recognizes as potentially damaging or harmful, the innate immune system is going to rise up in defense and try to block it out. Um, the, uh, this can work very well, but uh, um, it may not be completely adequate against a, a determined invader and so this is where the adaptive immune system comes in and the adaptive immune system gets more specific uh, and this is where uh, things like antibodies that uh, have memory against certain infections uh, will um, play a role and allow for a, a much more aggressive and effective response from the immune system. Additionally, these uh, so-called B cells and T cells and the, uh, adap and the adaptive immune response uh, are involved in regulating the uh, other the other cells in the uh, in innate response. Um, so uh, so sometimes people will ask me, you know, is inflammation is it good or is it bad? Because a lot of times in the office we're talking about inflammation as if it's a bad thing, but in, in truth uh, there there's not a clear cut answer to that question because it it depends on the circumstances. So. If you have a splinter, an infection, uh, if uh, you have an injury and you need some of that damaged or dead tissue cleared out so that healing can take place, well, inflammation's a good thing. You want it to happen. But then when it's done, it should be done. And so this brings us to, uh, to the difference between acute and chronic inflammation. So what should happen is you should have an initial fairly aggressive response for the immune, from the immune system. The problem ideally will be solved and then the, uh, the immune system should calm down again and, and go away. Uh, we're back to its basal state. What happens with chronic inflammation is this, this resolution doesn't occur. So something is continuing to stimulate and activate the immune system. 